pre-fader or a post-fader? That's the question. A few days ago, a student came to me and asked me what is the difference between the sense used pre-fader or post-fader. And we listened to a little project. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it always fade away? So we've got two tracks, we've got the vocals and the piano, and now we want to use the sand here. You see, I got the first slot and it's set to post fader. Let's choose the reverb short, activate it. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it always fade away? Now we can change the sand from post fader to pre fader. Doesn't it ever stay? So we hear much more reverb than at post fader. When we use this one at post fader, at first the signal goes from the clip to the inserts, from the inserts to the fader, and at last from the fader, from the channel fader to the sands. But we can change the routing when we change the sands from post to pre. The signal goes from the clip to the inserts, from the inserts to the sends, and then to the channel fader. So when we are at post, and now the signal goes to the fader and then to the send, the sends depends on the fader. For example, you say, okay, the vocals are too loud, and you want to turn them down or the opposite, you change not just the volume of the fader, you change uh, the volume of the sand too. Doesn't it ever stay? Does it always fade away? I can hold this tears. But when we set this one to pre-fader, it's independent to this fader. Doesn't it ever and now I show you where we can use the pre. Now I want to add a long reverb. And what I want to do at the last part here, I want to turn down the dry signal, but I want to give a lot of into a long reverb. All these tears, they washed away my face. But I want to change um, that this signal here then is going down and it's automated. So I show to you. I turn this second one and now we automate this channel. So let's do this. All these tears, they washed away my faith. Now I want that the last seconds of the dry signal are turned down. So let's do this. So we've got a fade out here. I can hold these tears, they wash away my face. Okay, and now the long reverb is gone. And the solution is now we can turn this one into pre-send and this one is post uh, pre-fader and post-fader okay and that's much too loud so let's say we turn it a little bit down Now we get to the next example, we listen to this drum beat. And with the sand, we send it to these two effects. Here we've got the vintage compressor and the quarter fats. So we hear both signals, we hear at first the dry signal and the drums and then we add the signal of these two effects. Okay, now I go back and I turn down the fader.
and you see there is not so much work for the compressor now and for the quadrafats the same. Now I turn the fader back to zero. So it's not just the volume, the whole sound changes. Okay, how can we change this? Because now we want to say, I want to change this fader sometimes. And when I say, now we do this. And now I change the fader. We just hear the signal of the compressor and the quadrafas, but we want to change the both sounds. Okay, so the first thing is we can say we want to put them to the group. So activate both of them and say we want to do this. Drums processed. And now we can do it here with one fader. But that's not what I want to do now. I want to do another way. So I choose both fader and I go to link. Let's say these are the drums. Just want to change the volume, nothing else. Okay, and now we can change the volume. And now I go to the last example here in the control room. I added a cue. It's called artist. So it's for the recording room and there will be an artist, singer, what else been. And he wants to have its own mix. So he can listen to the mix I created for me. But perhaps he says, well, I want to hear my own mix. And here are the cue cents. So now We've created the cue sense for the vocals and the piano. And let's say it's another additional singer. And we can listen to the mix and to the cue mix. So this is my mix and this is the mix for the artist. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it always fade away? Okay, so he is missing the reverb. Let's add this one. Doesn't it ever Okay, but now he wants to hear the piano much lower. So we can turn down this one. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it always fade away? Doesn't it ever stay? So this works. This is my mix and this is the mix for the artist. Okay, but now I want to turn down the piano for me and let's do it. So I turn down the piano, let's say minus 12. Doesn't it ever stay? Okay, and now we listen to the mix of the artist. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it all Okay, so what I did now, I changed the volume for me and I turned down the volume for the artist too because uh, this one is set to post fader too. Okay, that's not very well. So what we can do, we can say we set this one to pre fader and go to here, go to pre fader, but to have the same mix, we got to set it to the fader. So here you see we've got minus 10, 4. So when I don't do this, and I set them all to zero, let's do this. And now we listen from the mix to the Q mix. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it always Whoa, 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 so now the mix was very loud. So we can set this one to the same level here, minus 
10 or, or minus 16. Yeah, you can see it's very small. I can do this by hand. So here we've just got three different channels, but perhaps this will be much more. So the solution is I choose all these channels. Now I go to this symbol. Then I go to control room Q channels from selected mixer channels. Use current mix levels. And it's done. Now I can go from mix to the Q mix. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it always fade away? Nothing changes. And when I now want to turn down the piano at my mix, it doesn't change at the Q mix. Doesn't it ever stay? Must it always fade away? So this has been three examples for using pre-send and post -send. When you like this video, please give me a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new episode. See you the next time. Bye.